Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Felicia. I'm so excited to have so many of you guys here today. Like Felicia said, my name is McKenna Blanthorne, and I am the marketing coordinator here at Silhouette America. So I do a lot of things. If you've ever um, joined one of our Zoom classes before, I teach a lot of our Zoom classes, mostly this intro class that's very beginner friendly. We're just going to go over how to make your first cut with Silhouette. And then we're also going to talk about our different machines that we have here at Silhouette. So I do that. And then I also get to run our social media account, um, well, all of our different accounts on the different platforms. So I get to see a lot of the awesome things that you guys are making. So make sure to always tag us at silhouette.inc with a C um, so that I can see that and repost some of your awesome projects. And then I also write a lot of our blog posts too. So it's a super awesome, super fun job. But this is one of my favorite parts. It's getting to interact with our customers and getting to know you guys. And I wanted to tell you that I actually have my gallery view open on my laptop right here. So um, Felicia told you guys to watch in the speaker view so that you'll be able to see my, um, like me on the screen and you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. But I like to have mine in gallery view. And if you're comfortable, go ahead and turn your camera on so I can see you guys. Looks like we have about 10 people that have their cameras on, so hi everybody. Um, and I'll just be kind of looking at it periodically. And I just like seeing you guys' faces. That's like one of the best parts of doing these online classes is that we can connect all over the world and it doesn't matter where we're at. So hello from Silhouette Headquarters, at least that's where we are. And I got to see where a lot of you guys are tuning in from. It looks like we're kind of all over the place. So it's super awesome to have all of you guys here. And to start out, I just want to ask you guys, what brings you to this Silhouette class today? Is it that you maybe just got a Silhouette machine for Christmas? Are you thinking about purchasing a Silhouette machine? Are you already a Silhouette owner? I just want to know kind of in the chat what your Silhouette level is. Like I said, this class is very beginner friendly. Um, if you're looking for more in-depth tutorials on the software, we're not going to cover a ton of the software this month. But next month, instead of this Intro to Silhouette class, we're going to be doing a five tools in Silhouette Studios class where we'll teach you five main tools in Silhouette Studio. So that's a really, really fun class that will teach you more about the software. And that's going to be next month. And I'm not sure the exact date, but you can always watch our social media channels and our YouTube and our Michael's, um, their registration sheet. And they'll have it listed there for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at the chat. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you are new Silhouette users. Um, and that's exactly what this class is for. Awesome. So most of you bought your machine or received it for Christmas and you just wanna know how to use it. So I will start out by saying that I know that the Silhouette machine can be a little bit daunting because it does have the software aspect. And if you just open it like this, you're probably not exactly sure how to use it. So we're just gonna take things really, really slow. Um, like Felicia said, I'm going to be answering questions. I'll be trying to look at the chat as well, like as the most I can, but there are a lot of you guys. So I also have my friend Kelly in the chat and Kelly is another one of our awesome silhouette teachers. And she's also going to be monitoring questions in the chat. So I am going to try and take things really, really slow. Um, but if you have questions, just feel free to ask them. Um, we should have plenty of time to get through everybody's questions. So let's go ahead and start out by just going over our different machines that we have. So it looks like a lot of you guys are Cameo 4 users, and that's this machine right here. The Cameo 4 is our flagship machine, and it's our most popular machine. It cuts a, a large array of materials like paper, vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, fabric, felt, um, leather, sticker paper. There's so many, there's a complete list online of all the things that it cuts. So they're just the first ones that come to the top of my head. Um, but this is the machine, like it's very, very versatile. It cuts 12 inches in width. So it just opens like that, it has a nice little plastic protective cover on it. And when you open it, this is what it looks like. You have your metal bar right here that feeds your material through. And then um, when you get the machine, it comes with all of the power cords that you're going to need to plug in your machine. And then it also comes with a USB cord to plug it into your computer, even though this machine is Bluetooth compatible. And then when you also receive your machine, you'll receive one auto blade um, that's right there in that compartment. And that's the blade that we most standardly use. There's a couple other blades you can use, but um, this is kind of the standard blade. 
And then you'll also receive a 12 by 12 Cameo 4 mat. So that's what you get when you purchase the machine. And we can look at it on Michael's website. We're going to go to Michael's website. I'm going to show you where you can purchase these if you don't already have one. Um, but I'll show you the prices. So that's what's included. And then, like I mentioned, there's also other tools that you can use. And some of the tools will go in the tool one slot, but most of them will go in the tool two slot. Um, and this just has more motor power, this carriage does. So you can use tools like our rotary blade or our craft blades that can cut craft foam and things like that. And it, that just requires a little bit extra push and ump. And that's what the carriage two allows. So that's a feature of the Cameo 4 that's super, super great. Um, and then another fun feature is that you can cut any brand of vinyl matless which is unique to our cutting machines is we here at Silhouette, we don't want to require you to use our brand of vinyl. We know that everybody has different preferences. So you can cut any brand of vinyl matless or heat transfer matless. And um, this is just a vinyl roll feeder that's built into it. And we actually sell nine inch vinyl for our other machine I'm going to show you, which is why you can use nine inch vinyl on this machine. And it has a nine inch vital setting, but then you would just slide it out to the 12 inch mark and you can cut any standard 12 inch roll of vinyl. So that's a super awesome feature of the Cameo 4. And I'd love to just answer maybe two questions that you might have about the Cameo 4. So if you have a question about the Cameo 4, go ahead and put it in the comments for me. And then we'll see um, if I can answer those for you. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. Thank you guys so much for turning your cameras on. I love seeing all of your faces. It's super fun. Okay. Um, so somebody asked about the arrows on the machine. How do you use the lighted arrows on the machine? Um, so I don't have anything loaded in here right now, but I will show you when I show you how to cut matless on the machine. There's an arrow pad that shows up right here, and it's just to feed through your vinyl either um, forward or backward or however you might need to move it. So that's what that is, but it's not necessarily showing up right now because I don't have anything pulled up. Okay, and then this is actually a good question. So somebody asked, is it really a 12 inch width or slightly smaller? So the Cameo 4 really is a 12 inch width. All of these rolls of vinyl are exactly 12 inches wide and all of these rolls of vinyl work with the Cameo 4 machine. And you can also um, use the mat, like I said, but matless, it really is a true 12 inch width that you can cut with your machine. Okay. Okay, somebody asked, are the features of the Cameo 4 the same as the Cameo Pro? So we're going to talk about the Cameo Pro in a few minutes, but they are actually exactly the same machine. So the Cameo Pro is like the mother of all Cameo 4s, I would say. Um, it's just a much larger version, a doubled in size version of the Cameo 4, but all of the features are exactly the same. Okay, let's maybe do one more question. So somebody asked, does the Cameo 4 have a 12 by 12 cutting mat to cut 12 by 12 paper? So yes, it does. I'm going to show you guys how to use that, but this is what it looks like right here. And then maybe, Brian, are those our extra tools? Maybe I can show those so people are a little bit not as confused. So these are our second carriage tools, and these are purchased at an additional cost. Um, you can buy them at the Michaels store or online. And so this is my favorite second tool, and this is the rotary blade. And it's literally a miniature rotary blade. Like you maybe, like my grandma would always use a rotary blade to sew when I was younger. And this is just a miniature version that will make all of your cuts for you. So I'm going to go ahead and stow this um drawer right here and when you're using the second carriage you just pop it in just like you would the number one tool and then you just shut it and then that's how it works and it just has extra power it has double the amount of power as this one so um we just use that when we're cutting materials that are a little bit more stiff or um that just are a little bit thicker so that's what the second carriage is for all right so I hope that answered a decent number of you guys' questions. We are gonna go ahead and move on to our next machine because I wanna have plenty of time to demo for you guys as well um, how to make your first cut on the Cameo 4. So this is our second machine right here. This is the Portrait 3. And as you can see, it's a much smaller machine than the Cameo 4. 
This machine can cut nine inch vinyl, which we do sell here at Silhouette because we don't think you should have to cut down your 12 inch vinyl and waste it or anything like that. So we do sell nine inch vinyl, um, but this machine is perfect if you don't have a huge crafting space or a lot of people like to use it on their kitchen counter for organizational projects. Like if you're doing a spice rack drawer or if you're organizing your pantry or just if you're just doing a small project that you don't want the big cameo out, the Portrait 3 is a great option. A lot of people really like to use this for print and cut projects, which is where you print a piece of sticker paper on a printer or not necessarily sticker paper, but also paper with tags and things like that. And then it reads the registration marks that you put on it and it knows exactly where to cut to give you a perfect outline around your object. So the Portrait 3 is very, very popular for that. Like I said, I run the social media and there's a few of our customers that I've seen that have just an army of Portrait 3 machines. Like they have like 20 and they sell stickers. And so it's kind of fun, but the Portrait 3 is also Bluetooth compatible and it can cut vinyl, heat transfer, paper. Um, if you're cutting fabric with the Portrait 3, you will need to use a fabric stabilizer because it doesn't have the second carriage. Um, but it still has a lot of cutting capabilities. And like I said, you can find a complete list of all the cutting capabilities on our website. Um, but it's a super awesome machine. When I'm working here in the office and I am in my cubicle and I don't want to pull out my big cameo, I always reach for the portrait. And it's also perfect for letter sized paper. So if you're majority -ly, or majority, -ly, that's not a word. <laughs> if you're going to be using letter sized paper majority of the time and not 12 by 12 cardstock, or if you're gonna be using printed things, this is the machine that you would want because it's just the perfect size for that. And it's just really easy. When you purchase this machine, it will come with an auto blade as well the machine, the power cords, and a portrait size mat, which is skinnier and fits inside this machine. So that's the Portrait 3. It's a super awesome machine. I think it's one of my favorites because it's just so tiny, it's cute, and it's just easy to use. And then we're gonna go from really, really small to really, really big. <laughs> like I just said, the Cameo Pro is double the size of the Cameo 4. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up right here. So this is the Cameo Pro machine. It can cut 24 inches in width, which actually makes it the largest DIY cutting machine on the market. So if you are gonna be making really, really big crafts, you need the Cameo Pro. Um, I have been using it a lot more this week because here at Silhouette, that's kind of one of our goals this year is to make more things with the Cameo Pro. And I used it to make a giant calendar that we put on a chalkboard. And then I also used the print and cut feature to make some giant birthday party decorations. So those are some things that I think a lot of people could use the Cameo Pro for. But as far as the actual machine goes, it has all of the same cutting capabilities as the Cameo 4. Like I said, it's just way bigger. So when you purchase this machine, it will come with an auto blade, which we don't have one in here right now, but it will come with one and the power cords and then a giant Cameo Pro mat. And Brian, can you actually grab me one of the Cameo Pro mats so we can see how big they are? Yes, Alma said, please make more tutorials for the Cameo Pro. Those are definitely in the works, Alma. I've been loving using the Cameo Pro and I think it's super exciting. So this is the Cameo Pro mat. It's 24 square inches wide. So it's 24 by 24. And then this is the Cameo 4 mat, which is 12 by 12. Um, so you can see that it's a lot bigger. <laughs> it's double in size. So it's super awesome. Um, it's a really, really fun machine. You do kind of have to have your own space for it if you're going to use the Cameo Pro because you have to be able to have the mat feed all the way forward and all the way back to get the best results. Um, so that's something if you're considering buying the Cameo Pro, make sure you've already thought about where you're going to store it and also where you're going to use it because you do have to have kind of a large space. But if you're into that, if you're into big crafts, we highly recommend the Cameo Pro and it's a super awesome machine. So it looks like... Oh, I really like, so it looks like Sharon talked about how the portrait is portable and Kelly commented that that's a really good point. And it just is because it fits in a backpack. Um, when I started teaching these classes, I was using the portrait a lot. And I really, really liked that I was be here at the office because at home, I just have a Cameo 4. And I really liked that I could be here at the office and I could literally bring my backpack 
or my large purse and put the portrait in my backpack and take it home and work on it that night and then bring it back. So it's super easy um, to take different places and it's just a very easy thing if you're gonna be taking it to client homes to make vinyl decals or things like that. Okay, let me just go ahead and take a little look at the chat to see if we have, so um, somebody asked, is there a 15 inch machine? And there is a 15 inch machine. We're not gonna go over it today, but it's just in between the Cameo 4 and the Cameo Pro. So that's called the Cameo Plus. And like I said, the Cameo 4 is 12 inches. The Cameo Plus is 15 inches and the Cameo Pro is 24 inches. So if you're interested in that, go for it. So somebody asked, can you use the Cameo Pro without a mat? And you can use the Cameo Pro without a mat. Um, you do have to set up the roll feeder and the mat support, which you actually always have to set up with the Cameo Pro to get the proper results for cutting. And we have a lot of tutorials on our YouTube channel, on our Silhouette blog, and also our Instagram has a lot of um, videos that show how to properly set up the Cameo Pro. But when you have that roll feeder slash mat support, it will feed your vinyl rolls um, so you don't have to use the mat. Okay. Awesome. Well, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and jump into. So, okay, Jan asked, will you be going over using pen adapters? So in this class, we won't be going over using the pen adapters because this is just a beginner class. So we are literally just covering how to begin with your silhouette machine. But we have a lot of classes. Some of them are the premium classes through Michaels that are $15 um, at the end of each month that Kelly is actually gonna be teaching this month. So we do have those classes every month. And then we've done classes with Michaels pretty much every week for about the last year. Um, and some of those have actually covered the pen adapter. So if you're interested in that, um, Kelly might be able to find the link for you of the class that she did on the pen adapters. And she might be able to link that for you to check out Jen, but we won't be covering that today. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So I want this class to be super interactive and I want you guys to kind of be being able to choose what we're doing. So to start out, um, I can show you guys a few different things. We said we were going to show our first cut with silhouette. If we have time, I'm more than happy to show you guys a paper cut and a vinyl cut. But what's your preference? Would you rather see a vinyl cut or would you rather see a paper cut? So go ahead and tell me in the chat. Okay. All right, so it's there's some of each, but it seems like mostly vinyl. So we're gonna go ahead and start with vinyl and then we're going to do the paper. So somebody asked, I saw a comment that said, can you show what people commonly use the machines for? So um, I don't necessarily have like, we have a couple of projects behind me right here. Um, we have these paper, crepe paper flowers that somebody made, these paper plants. Um, I'm just gonna grab this little bear is kind of fun. It's like a fabric project, but people use these things for so many things. And I think that if you want to find out more things that people are using them for, I just would really point you guys to our Instagram page, which is silhouette.inc or our Facebook page. And we post inspiration things every single day of what people are using. So if you just wanna go and just scroll through there, you're gonna see a lot of inspiration on what you can do with it. Okay. All right, so let's use, let's do vinyl. So um, one thing that I wanna show you guys first off, and I'm sure you know this if you are already a silhouette user, is um, you have to download software, but our software is free for all users. So you will download that on our website and maybe Kelly can put um, the link to the software in, uh, in the chat so you guys can click on it. But when you download it, it'll show up like this. Oh, whoops, I need to start my screen share. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so when you download it, um, it will show up in your toolbar down here. I'm using a Mac computer, but if you have a Windows computer, you'll be able to see it and find it also. But I'm just gonna click Silhouette Studio and this is what it pulls up. So I'm just gonna try and open the chat so I can still see what you guys are saying if you have any questions. Okay, Kelly, thanks so much for putting the link to the software right there, that's really helpful. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you open it and it will default to the last 
setting that you were using for your um, project. So I was cutting my matless vinyl. So that's why it looks like this. I was, the first thing you're going to do when you open up your software is you're going to come up and select the machine that you're using. So today we're using the Cameo and then you're going to select your cutting mat. So as I mentioned, you can cut vinyl and heat transfer without a mat. If you're a beginner um, for your first project, I would suggest using the mat just because it will get you more used to it. Matless cutting is easy and it's not hard. And that is something that we've covered in a lot of other classes. But since this is a beginner class, I just wanna show you just the basics of how you can create a project in the easiest that you can do. Um, and then we're also going to change the media size because I was cutting matless right here. Um, so for right now, let's just make it 12 by 12. Um, but we, I'll show you guys how you can cut that down to an exact size that you might be using. So, oh, somebody said, um, I don't have the page setup bar when I open my program. So I'm gonna show you what to do if that happens. So I'm guessing, um, Nora, it looks like this when you open it. And these are all of your tools over here. I do have the upgraded software, so I have a few more tools. That's just a one-time upgrade fee that you can pay through silhouetteamerica.com to get more tools but um, yours will just be a little bit more basic if you're using the normal software, but you just click this top page right here. But that's a really good question because I know how it is when you can't find something that you're looking for in a program. Um, so I hope that answered your question, but let's just leave it at 12 by 12 for right now. And then I'm actually going to show you um, how I kind of measure things and prepare my vinyl to cut before I even find a design. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and then I'm just gonna push my computer to the side. And I actually didn't grab anything to put some vinyl on. So I'm just going to take this little plant right here um, and we're just gonna put some vinyl right here on the front. And I will help you have you guys help me kind of choose what we might put on here. Um, but I just wanna share a little tip with you guys about how big to make your vinyl your vinyl decal or even your paper thing. So when your mat comes, it comes with this blue wax paper covering and make sure you keep this and you always cover your mat every time you're finished using it because then it will keep your mat from getting dusty and getting hair on it and anything else that might be lingering in your craft space because we know craft spaces get kind of dirty. So one thing that I really like about the mat when you receive it is that it has um, inch scores on it, everything is marked in one inch squares. So when I'm doing a project and I don't have a ruler close by, I can just always refer to my mat. And I just kind of lay my mat on top of my item that I'm cutting. And it looks like this little vase is about four and a half inches tall. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to do my little decal about three inches. And that's just my personal preference. Um, like I said, you don't have to do this. You might have a ruler laying around that makes it easier for you. But if you don't have a ruler, just don't sweat it. And that's a fun, easy way to use your mat. So um, we're gonna make our decal three inches. So now um, I wanna prepare our vinyl. So I have white vinyl, pink vinyl, and purple vinyl right here. I just kind of chose colors that matched our set. So go ahead and tell me in the chat which color of vinyl you guys want me to use. So I have pink, purple, or white. So somebody, Jan asked, when you're done, can you show the best way to put the mat, like put the cover back on the mat? So um, I will show that. Um, just remind me to do it at the end, Jan. Okay, so purple, a lot of purples. Some pinks, but purples. Okay. So one thing that I wanted to point out, not only do we have the scoring and the inches on the mat, but we also have them on the back of our Silhouette brand vinyl. And a lot of other brands of vinyl also have the squares. So um, this is a brand new roll of vinyl actually. So it has a half inch along the top and then um, it has like three squares down. And just because I want a little bit of extra room, because I'm going to make it three inches, I'm just going to cut a little bit beyond 
the three squares just so I'm not running over the edge. So I'm just going to count down three squares. This one is, like I said, three and a half because I have the extra half inch on the side. And this is a really easy way to not waste vinyl if you're just making one thing, just cut what you need. Um, and if you're cutting matless, that's not necessarily something you can do. Um, but when you're using your mat, it's a little tip. And then you're just going to line up the corner of your vinyl with the corner of the one inch square and just go ahead and stick it on your mat, just like that. Okay, awesome. So now I wanna show you guys how to go into the Silhouette Design Store. So I'm gonna start my screen share again. And then um, you can just come up here to this tab up here in your Silhouette software and click store. You can also go to silhouettedesignstore.com and that can get you there just as easily. So it's not a super um, hard thing to find, but it's a super fun feature that we have here at Silhouette. So one thing I always want to point out when we do these classes is the sales that the Silhouette Design Store always has. They're always running like one or two sales, I swear. So right now we're doing a printable sale if you're interested in um, printed projects or printing cut projects or stickers or things like that. So that's a sale that's going on right now. And then we also give out a free design of the week every single week. And I think this design is like a premium design to get for free because it's a banner. So you get all of these pieces for free and you can use these hearts um, in other things if you want to, but it's a super awesome thing. And we switch out the free design every single Tuesday. And we also post about it every Tuesday or Wednesday. So if you're ever wondering what the free design is, you can come to the website and check it out or you can just check on our social media and we'll have it on there. And then we also have bundles and bundles are just buying a lot of the same, like a lot of the same theme of a design um, for a lower price. So I'll just click up here in this bundle section. And so this is like a fairy tale theme. So if you bought all of these files individually, it would be 1188, but if you buy them in the bundle, it's 499. And those usually switch out based on holidays or just time of the year or just a lot of different things. So there's a lot of different um, fun features of the design store that we share a lot about on our social media. And it's just a fun place to just explore and be inspired by things. So one thing that I wanted to show you guys is how you can find a design. So here in the design store, we have over 300,000 designs. So there really is anything that you could possibly be looking for. And that being said, I would love to cut something today that you guys want to see cut. So um, does anybody have a recommendation? We are gonna do like a simple cut file um, just because this is supposed to be a simple class, but does anybody have a recommendation of something they might like to see cut? So Lauren said a flower. Um, Oh, a couple of flowers. So I guess we're gonna do a flower. I think that's a great thing to see cut first. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and come up here to the search bar and I'm just gonna type in flower. And there are a lot of different flowers on the design store. There's 3D paper flowers like the ones I showed you. But since we're doing a vinyl project, we're going to be doing one like this. That's like a single color. Um, these obviously would take a little bit more time to weed. Um, this one is pretty simple, so I'm thinking maybe we could do that one. Let me just scroll and see if there's a better simple option. Um, I think we'll do that one. Did I pass it? Okay, right here. So to purchase a design, um, you're just going to click on the design, and then you're going to add the, or click this little shopping cart that says add to cart, and then you're just going to press this arrow that takes you to the design store checkout. And then you're just gonna click checkout. And then it will have you type in your password. And then that's all you have to do on this end of the design store. Looks like the internet might be a little bit slow today. Okay, so then once you've purchased that design, Oh, thanks for putting that link, Kelly, to the flower that we picked. 
Um, so Jen said, would love to see one with more intricate lines. So this class is just very beginner friendly. Um, we, like I said, we've done so many other classes that have a very intricate designs. I did a heat transfer t-shirt a couple months ago that was very, very intricate. So if you're looking for one, that one has very intricate designs. So, um, and that class was recorded and posted on Michael's YouTube. So then once you have or picked your design, you're gonna come up here to your library. And then um, if it isn't showing up, we're gonna go ahead and press the sync button, but it's actually syncing right now. So if your design isn't showing up, just press the sync button and it will make sure everything that you just purchased from the design store um, will show up, but um, it will be showing up because it already sync or sunk. Okay. All right, so then um, you're just gonna come up here and then I always like to use a search bar and I just type flower and then it's actually the first one that pulled up right here. I have a lot of flowers, but we're going to go ahead and press it. And then I want to go ahead and answer some of these questions that I see pulling in, um, coming in before we move on with this. So um, Alma said, most people use these to make something to sell it afterwards. So the commercial use box should be checked in that case, right? Does that give us the license to sell using the design? So let's go ahead and hop back into the design store. And I want to point out what Alma is saying, because that's a super insightful um, point to make. So I'm just going to go ahead and click one of these designs. And um, this one is actually not available for commercial use. Okay, so this one is. So I clicked this KISS design, and if you are planning on selling the, the design, you just press the commercial use. It took the design from 99 cents to 4.99 because you are making money off of it, but that is just a one-time payment that you have to make. Um, so make sure that you are being honest and clicking that always and just um, respecting our designers in that way, that if you're gonna sell it, you buy the commercial use, but you only have to buy it once and you can sell as many as you want. So you're definitely gonna be, make back your 4.99 of money. And then someone said, is the design download, downloaded to the Cameo or to your computer? Um, so it, it's not downloaded to your downloads folder on your computer it's downloaded to the Silhouette Studio um, and everybody has a certain amount of, it's like cloud storage on there and I haven't even come close to using mine yet, um, but you can directly download to the computer if that's something that you want to do or if you're using a different machine, um, you would want to do that. So you can do that, but you don't have to. And then if the design is a gift, should we still use the commercial use? You don't have to use the commercial use if the design is a gift, only if you're making money off of it. Um, somebody said, what if you purchase for personal use initially, but later decide to sell? I'm actually um, not sure on that question. So you would probably just need to contact our customer support on that. And they'd be able to give you a answer on that. Um, so if you're looking to save your files on your laptop, when you download, I'm just going to add this one to the cart and check out. So if you're looking to download your files on your laptop, once you check out, you will be given the opportunity to direct download and that will download all your files that you just purchased to your laptop. So somebody asked, is there a class about the app? So there is a class about the app. Kelly did it a few months ago and it's on our YouTube channel. Okay, perfect. So um, Monica, you can't change the color of the mat on the software. So just to answer that question. So somebody asked, will you be able to show us how to upload our own designs from our computer to the library to use? Um, so that's not something we're gonna be covering in this class, but we're actually, covering that in a premium class next month. So um, I'm gonna be teaching that class. I'm gonna be showing how to use Procreate on my iPad and then uploading designs into Silhouette Studio and using them, but we won't be covering that in this beginner course. Okay, well, you guys have a lot of questions, which is awesome. I'm so glad we've been able to get through them. So let's go ahead and move on now. So when we open the design, it's very, very large. 
Um, so Kelly said you can change the matte color in the current version of Silhouette Studio. I apologize, I wasn't aware that you can do that. So um, I'm not sure how that works, but I guess you can do that. So we'll kind of look into that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and resize this flower so that we can make it the size that we need it on our mat. So we did make our vinyl three and a half inches wide. So we're going to come up to our width and our height and we're going to make it three and a half inches again um, on both sides, just so that we can preview the actual design in the space. And then I'm going to zoom out. Okay, and then um, since we wanted our design to be three inches, I'm gonna come up here to change it. You can just drag the corners and make it three inches, or you can type up here and make it exactly three inches. So whatever you prefer, we um, will make the height three inches. So the width is a little bit less. And then, so Natalie asked, how are you looking in and out or zooming in and out? So that's a great question. Um, and I'm actually using the keyboard shortcuts, but the easier way to do it is to just use these magnifying glasses up at the top. Then you can just zoom in and then you could zoom out. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click in the center and drag this over to my little piece of vinyl. You just want it to be inside the red line. So as long as it's inside the red line, you're totally good. Um, somebody asked, what are the shortcuts for Zoom? And on my computer, it's just command and then the plus key and the minus key. So, and then um, Kelly, I don't know if the link for that premium class is available yet, but if it is, if you could put it in the chat, that would be awesome. And it is a $15 class. Um, so that's to answer that question too. And then Shanta asked, will this video be available after today? And it is being recorded and it will be posted on Michael's YouTube channel within 24 to 48 hours. So Tessa or Tess asked, is there a way you can preview exactly what is going to be cut? So this is a preview of exactly what's going to be cut. This is our mat. This is our vinyl, this um, white piece. And this is our preview of what's going to be cut. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just um, go ahead and go to the send panel now. I know that was a little bit fast. Does anybody have any questions about what I just did regarding resizing the design and putting it on the mat? And then Felicia, it looks like you linked the premium class, the hanging hearts. Um, are you able to link the premium class? That's I think it's around the middle of February. And it's how to import, how to use Procreate and Silhouette Studio together. I think that's the one that we're talking about, about importing other designs. So if, if it's not, the link's not available yet, that's okay. It'll be available in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, I'm sure. So no worries if not. Okay, Jan asked, did you just put the media size manually? So yes, I did. I just came over here. I knew that my vinyl I made was 3.5 inches and I just selected it, deleted, whatever was there before and I just typed 3.5 and that's how I did that oh awesome so Felicia just added that link um okay and then so Laura asked can you choose a color design and still cut it out so you can choose a color design as long as it's not a print and cut design um this doesn't necessarily have to pull up in black this design just actually did um but just keep in mind that if it's not a print and cut design you just need to use the color of vinyl that you want but you can use colored designs this design just happened to be um, black and then somebody asked will you be able to color this design so let's go ahead and show you how to do that because that's a pretty easy um, thing to do so I'm just going to open the fill panel right here that looks like a little paint palette and then you can pick any color you want we're using like a lilac purple um, so you don't necessarily have to color it, but if you're cutting something with a lot of pieces, it's helpful to color your pieces to know which pieces go with what piece of vinyl. So um, just to kind of swing back to the changing the color of the mat question, Kelly pointed out that I must not be on the most recent version of the software. I think I'm on the second most recent. So I just need to update that 
and apparently you can do that. And then Tim asked, how do you do print and cut? So we have a whole bunch of classes that cover print and cut, but that is not something we're gonna to cover today in this class. Um, so Nora said, do you mind cutting some, or adding some text? So we have a lot of other classes that show that too. We just wanna keep this class as simple as possible for those that are making just their first cut. But we do have a lot of other classes. So thanks for asking though. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring this now. So I was in the design panel and I just clicked the send panel up here. And then if it has a red, red outline in it, it means that it's going to print or it's going to cut. So everything in our flower is going to cut. Um, so we're good there. And then we just need to select our material that we're using. So we are using vinyl and it is glossy vinyl that I'm using. And then I always like to cut my vinyl on a two um, for the blade depth. You don't have to, you can cut it on a one and it might work great for you. I just always like to cut my blade or move my blade depth to a two. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and, and I leave the force the same and the speed the same. This is the beauty of the auto blade is that it will adjust automatically for you and you don't have to change any of those things. Um, so the two that I'm talking about is just the blade depth of the auto blade, how deep the blade is. So um, that's just what the one and the two is. And then the force is just at a 10. It can go up to a 20, I think is the highest. And then the speed can go up really, really high. I've actually never adjusted the speed on my Cameo. So I'm not totally sure what it can change to. I'm sorry, I accidentally undid that. Okay. So, yep, I'm just going to re reiterate it one more time that this dial is just the blade depth. So if you had your dial on 10, um, it would be the absolute deepest your blade can cut and you would want to use that on the thickest materials that you're cutting. But vinyl is very, very thin. Um, so I don't ever use a deep blade for that. I always use a two. And then somebody, Rosemary said, why do you suggest to change force and speed to help cut better with auto blade? So I don't suggest to change the force and the speed ever. So I never change the force and the speed um, because those settings are what I found works the best for us. Um, so we're just not going to change those. And then if you were doing, somebody asked about this no cut, cut and cut edge. In this design, it's not, um, it's not necessary, but if you were to select no cut, if you had your design selected, and if you're using print and cut, which is something we're not going over today, and you didn't want printed items to cut out, it doesn't have the red outline, um, but we're going to use cut. So somebody pointed out to me that my speed stayed at 30. So thank you so much for pointing that out because that might've been a little bit crazy. Okay, and then Kelly answered the next question I was gonna answer, which is you might just have to change your um, blade depth as your blade doles, or you've used it a lot or things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop our screen share and I'm gonna show you how to load this. So when we are loading our Cameo 4, you're going to line up your mat with the very, this gray um, edge. It's a little gray line with arrows right there. And we're just going to line our edge of our mat up with that gray line and then press the in button. And then those um, arrows show up right here. Um, so we're not going to use them because we're not cutting matless, but you can move um, you can move it, but like move it down. So we're not gonna do that because we're not cutting matless, um, but that's how those work. And you just hold them down and press them. And then one thing that we need to make sure when we're using a mat is you don't want this roller to be on the mat. You want to hold it down and move it over here. And this is actually the default place that it's in, um, but I was cutting nine inch vinyl before the class started. So that's why it was over there. But most of the time you just want it to click into place over here, that little roller, and then lock your machine into place. And there's a lot of tutorials that talk more about that. Um, I should have moved it back before the class started, but I just forgot to. So um, this is everything we have to do to set up our machine to begin cutting. Um, so let's go ahead and start my screen share again. The only thing that we have to do now 
because um, we're not changing any of these. We just have to come down here and our machine is connected. Um, and then if it wasn't connected, you would just click right here and the different machines would pop up. If you only have one machine, your one machine would pop up and you would just click that one and then you just press send. Okay, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to have time to do a paper cut today, um, but the last month class, the last intro to silhouette class that we did in December, we did do a paper cut. So if you're interested, go over to Michael's and you can just fast forward to the end and you will be able to see our paper cut example there too. So I'm, I always like to double check to make sure that it cut um, before I unload it. So I just take my little hook tool right here that I have, and then I'm just going to kind of start to pull away a little piece and it looks like it cut awesome. If it hadn't cut perfectly before you unload it, you could just go to your software and send it for another pass. Um, but you can't do that after you unload it because you might not load it in the exact same place. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel that off. And then um, somebody asked about putting the mat on. So you just put the um, glossy side down and I just kind of place it on there. I hold it pretty taut and I just squish it on down. I didn't do it perfectly, so maybe I'll do it again. Maybe I just haven't paid enough attention to putting it on perfectly. There we go. So you can just line it up, just push it down on all the edges and then you can stow your mat away. And then let's talk about um, weeding this out. So weeding is the process of removing the unwanted pieces of vinyl away from your design. So like I said, I'm using the Silhouette hook tool. Um, this is purchased separately, um, but there's so many hook tools that you might already have or that you could purchase. Um, yeah, it looks, it does look like a dental pick. <laughs> You're right. I was actually at the dentist yesterday, so it really does look like that. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of take out the pieces we don't want. And if your machine cut right and you had good settings on your machine, um, the pieces really will peel just right out. And this is one reason, um, you know, when you guys were saying that you'd love to see a more intricate design, um, I would love to show you a more intricate in design, a more intricate design in this class. But since we do have to move so quickly um, with all of the things that we have to cover, weeding intricate designs does take a long time. So that's why in this class, we just choose a really simple design um, that we can just weed very, very quickly and complete the project to show you guys. Um, but like I said, we have done more intricate designs in our other classes. And I think Kelly even added a link to some of those classes, so. Um, but I just like to kind of just peel it away slowly and just be gentle with it. These lines are pretty big, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Yes, Alma said it looks therapeutic until you have a very intricate and complicated design. I completely agree. I think weeding designs like this is really fun, <laughs> but weeding crazy designs is not always fun. So we're just gonna take away that excess. Um, so somebody said, do you think it would be easier taking the large area first? It's just personal preference. Whatever you think you like better, you can do. So I don't really have a preference. I don't, I don't always like think about it too much. Honestly, I just go for it. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, this is transfer tape. So this is what we're going to use to stick our flower on our uh, on our pot. I'm gonna bring the pot over here. And then transfer tape, I'm using the Ori tape brands. That's my favorite brand to use because it's very, very sticky and we do sell it at Michael's. 
Um, but you can use any brand of transfer tape that you have because I know there's so many different brands and a lot of people have different preferences. But when you cut your little piece, you're just going to peel off the backing. My nails are very long. <laughs> I was gonna cut them before the class, but I didn't, so. Oh man, I've never had this happen. So somebody said, what's the key to removing the backing from the tape? And I guess I just would say, don't have long nails because I've never had an issue with it before. Usually it just pops right off. There we go, okay. So um, usually I just fold a corner. If I'm having a hard time getting it to come off, I just fold a little corner and then it usually pops right up. So somebody said, is application tape the same as transfer tape? And I believe that it is. I believe it's the same. So we're just going to place our transfer tape on top and then we're going to use this silhouette scraper tool. Um, it looks like a little rectangle. It just has like a hard edge of plastic. And we're just going to go over it a few times. So um, La Lana, this transfer tape is available at Michael's. Yes, it's called the Aura Tape. Okay, and I just like to give it a good rub. And then I always flip over my transfer tape and I peel the transfer tape away from the vinyl. Um, just because that's just my preference and I find that it works better for me. So I just peel it away very slowly, making sure all of the pieces, this is just one big piece, but that they stick to the vinyl. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay this on its side. It's obviously a fake pop because the dirt isn't coming out. So and then I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to visually center this since I don't have a ruler, like I said, and I usually visually center everything. I'm not too worried about it being perfect. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go ahead and rub my thumb over all of the design portions of the tape and then just pick up the tape from the corner and slowly peel it back. Okay, and that is how you apply a silhouette cut to your hard surface. So if you're using a hard thing like um, a pot or a table or a sign or things like that, those are or a water bottle, those are things you would use vinyl for. If you're doing a soft item like a bag, a t-shirt, a, um, I'm trying to think what else, a pencil bag, things like that. Those are things you would use heat transfer vinyl for. And it cuts very similarly to regular vinyl. You just have to use an iron to adhere it to your item. But it cuts really, really beautifully. I think it's easier to do heat transfer vinyl with small intricate designs because it has a backing that you keep it on. And that is how you do it. And then make sure you save your transfer tape because it is reusable. Um, so like this roll, I think is $12 or something like that, um, but you can reuse it. So I always just save my backing piece, or here it is, my backing to my transfer tape, and then I just stick it on the backing. And I actually usually just stick it back inside my roll for storage. And then when I need it again, I just pull it out. So that's kind of the basics of using the silhouette. I know we covered a whole bunch of topics today and we covered a lot of things, but I hope that um, you guys feel inspired. You don't feel too intimidated to get your machine out. Um, it's been super awesome to be able to be here with you guys today. We do have a few more minutes. So if you have any questions, I'll stick around until two o'clock. Um, but if you do need to head out, go ahead and head out. And thank you so much for joining us today. It has been so awesome to have you guys. Um, so someone said, where can I find the premium courses listed? So the premium courses actually show up in the exact same place where you registered for this class. So you'll just go to Michael's online classes and you just keep scrolling and looking through all the classes and they'll just show up there and they'll say like $15 or whatever the price is for that premium class. And yes, thank you to Kelly for all of those links she added. I've never asked her to do that before. So she was definitely on her toes today. 
but we had such a big group that I wanted you guys to all have the information you needed. So um, Jan said, if it doesn't cut with the initial settings, what's your first go-to setting to change? Um, so it would depend on the different materials that I'm using, but I would always just try one more pass on it. If it doesn't cut the first time, I would just send it one more time to see if it cut through. And then I would start changing the blade depth probably after that. So the dial. Um, Samantha said, are there any classes on rotary blade or craft blade? So we do have rotary blade classes. The rotary blade is my favorite tool. Um, so those are just on Michael's YouTube channel that you can find those. And we did some, um, we did felt flowers. I don't think any of them are in here right now, but they were super fun. So that was a really good class. So somebody said, are the premium classes recorded as well? Um, so they are recorded, but they're only sent to the participants of the class that sign up. So um, you would have access to those, and I believe they're emailed to you after the fact. Um, Pamela said, I updated the software on my Mac and can't access the studio now. Any chance of combat compatibility happening soon? So I actually have the brand new Mac, and then I also have the brand new software on my Mac. Um, at home, not this one. This one's ancient and really old, but um, I do have the new one at home and it's working fine for me. So just go ahead and email our customer support and they should be able to help you resolve your issues on that. Okay. Um, so we did cover how to show the mat. Um, I can show you guys one more time since we have some time. I'm not going to load the paper on. I'll just have this right here. But um, like I said, so you're going to line up the edge of your mat with this gray arrow right here. So you're just going to go ahead and line that edge up and then you just press the upward arrow right here. And that's how you load it. Okay. Um, so I actually can't show you today how to change the color of the mat in the software because this Mac isn't updated to the newest software, um, but that is something that we'll keep in mind for the upcoming classes and I wasn't sh I didn't know about that update so we will have that in upcoming classes. Um, somebody said are you ever in danger of cutting through the mat so I have cut through the mat once with the craft blade and that was because I had my blade depth way too deep so that was my own fault. Just make sure if you're ever wondering how deep to cut, I would always go less and then work your way up. Don't ever start on a 10 um, because that is probably going to cut through your mat. So you can cut through it if your material isn't thick enough and you put your blade depth too high. Okay, awesome. So I just want to, um, so the mat locks into place when it's loaded. As you can see right here, it's like kind of taut and I can't just pull it out. So it does stay in place by itself. So when you're using this roller, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're pressing this lock button down and you need to um, take this little lever right here. Yeah, Brian's gonna zoom in on that for us. So when you're moving this roller, first you have to put this lever down so it's parallel to your bar. And then you need to press this lever down, kind of like when you're like opening a medication bottle and you have to apply pressure to the lid to screw it open. You have to apply pressure to that little gray button and then you can slide it. And it will click into place on these little notches in the bar. And that's how you know it's locked into place. And then as soon as it is locked into place, you need to put the lever up again. Hey, awesome. Well, I think that covers most of the questions that we had, guys. Um, it was so great to join for all of you to join me today. We had such a good time. Um, make sure to check in on our premium classes the rest of the month. Next week, we actually have a class um, that's not a premium class. It's free, but it's a project class. And if I remember correctly, it's Karina 
Gardner. No, I think it's Amy Robinson. I can't remember for sure, but it's an awesome class that's a project based. So if you're wanting to know more about specific materials and making a project, that's the class you're going to want to join. So thank you guys so much. We're excited to see you next month too, if you want to come back and join me. But thanks for joining us and have an awesome rest of your day.